Welcome to Last Night, the Sci-Fi Recap Show. What a night for non-fiction science fiction. The contestants on Face Off created Evil Dead versions of Egyptian gods, and we had the most brutal night yet on Robot Combat League. I'm joined today by Job Stevens, inventor and sci-fi effects wizard, who knows all about making science fiction into science fact. Job, thank you for being here. My pleasure, Liv. Are creature effects really that important these days? With CGI at the level it is, and rising, werewolves and ancient gods can be literally typed onto the screen. But the judges on Face Off act as if the slightest error in monster makeup could ruin someone's career. People don't realize what a fine art special effects can be, or how prevalent practical effects still are today. Movies like The Dark Knight Rises. The Amazing Spider-Man, The Lord of the Rings, and Inception use just as many practical effects as they do computer-generated ones. Not to mention we really should try to avoid becoming too dependent on computers. Thoughts an interesting statement coming from an inventor of your caliber. Well, let me put it this way. Which do you think would be easier for you to repair, a busted tablet computer, or a tear in a monster mask? Well, when you put it that way. Speaking of difficult to repair, the robots on last night's episode of Robot Combat League showed us why each of the pit stops are 20 minutes long. The damage they did to each other can't always be fixed even in that amount of time. As the host Chris Jericho says, are you ready for some robot carnage? Team X's robot had its head knocked right off. Three episodes in and we see our first robot decapitation. I think that comes more from sticking its neck out more than the others. Literally. An axe-shaped head that can actually chop at its opponent is clever, but it is more vulnerable. Thank goodness that robot wasn't really using its head for anything. And Team Game Over still took a worse beating, losing almost total control of its arms in every round. No clear knockout for either side, but the judges did not have a hard decision to make about who won. If you're looking for a clear knockout, then the next fight surely hit the spot, so to speak. Robo Hammer was touted as the most agile and maneuverable robot, but it sacrificed armor plating to get there. Oh, they were about halfway into the first round when Drone Strike lived up to its name. One good shot at the unprotected midsection and Robo Hammer doubled over like any fleshy human would have. If we learned anything from that fight, it's that you should never neglect protection. <laughs> Could not have said it better myself. What did you think about George Lucas visiting his daughter Amanda Lucas on the show? Oh, it was irresistible. I know Amanda Lucas has said, and anyone would agree with her, that she should be allowed to have her own success in life separate from her father. But how can you not have George Lucas on a show where his daughter is jockeying an 8-foot tall robot fighter? Well, tonight was his last chance to be on the show, unfortunately, since Amanda and her partner Sara and Otteru were eliminated along with Robo Hammer. A knockout in round one. Unbelievable. And awesome. Let's talk a bit more about Face Off. The theme was Evil Dead Egyptian Gods, and the show had its own celebrity guest. Bruce Campbell, star of the original Evil Dead trilogy, counseled the remaining makeup mavens on how they should approach their projects. Over the course of the trilogy it had become increasingly humorous, until Army of Darkness finally gave us a straight horror comedy. But the remake is just plain horror, and Bruce told the guys that was what they should try to do. Well, at least until the new movie comes out next month, I think the horror comedy version will be the one that sticks in people's minds the most. Certainly Eric F., who made it clear his whole family loves the original trilogy, did the best job of capturing it with his cross between the sun god Ra and evil Ash from Army of Darkness. I think it was Glenn Hetrick who pointed out that all of Eric's work on the show had been influenced by that era of filmmaking and creature effects, so it was inevitable that he'd go that direction last night. I actually loved House's God Toth, and how he inscribed all the writing on himself. I think just the concept itself should have been enough to keep him around for another week, not to mention all the great work he's done throughout the show. When you're down to the final five, it's a shame to see anyone go home. But I think we can all agree Chris deserved to win this week with his creation. I loved how Neville Page said it was flat dead and dull, appropriately so. On a show like this, that statement started off sounding very bad, 
until he paused and said appropriately so, and that was what won the competition for Chris. That was one of my favorite lines from Face Off last night. What was your favorite from Robot Combat League? When Chris Jericho, Sorobo Hammer crumpled and said, I smell oil, I smell hydraulics, I smell gas, I smell defeat. It was very Robert Duvall of him. Indeed. I always love some apocalypse now. Maybe even some robot apocalypse now. Oh, watching RCL last night, I'm more convinced than ever that it will be a robot apocalypse. If anyone would know, it would be you. Thank you for joining us, Job, and thank you all for watching last night. <laughs>